Hi, I'm very pleased to introduce and uh, have with us Mr. Lothar Detterman, professor at the Free University of Berlin since 1994 and uh, to the Berkeley University in uh, California. He is also partner at Becker and McKenzie in Palo Alto and is author of uh, a book which is titled in Italian Guida Pratica di Detterman alle leggi privacy published by Giuffre. Lothar is uh, precisely in between the uh, European uh, approach uh, in data privacy and the US one. Uh, having this clear in the picture, I, I would like to know from Lothar, uh, what is the trend of convergence uh, between the EU and the US in the privacy arena? Thank you so much for inviting me to your conference. I wish I could be in person. I love Italy. I grew up in Germany and as you mentioned have been teaching data protection law at the free university of berlin since 1994 i've been teaching there now and the difference of approaches historically are quite stark my home state of hessen where i was born more than 50 years ago passed the very first data protection law in the world about the time when i was born to regulate the processing of personal data as a dangerous activity, dangerous for civil liberties. And this is understandable with the history of Germany where the government committed horrible crimes on its own people, waged war against others, and an anonymous phone call from a neighbor could get somebody killed in a concentration camp. So when the German police wanted to use computers to create profiles on terrorists. My home state of Hessen stepped in and said, this is the vision of George Orville of 1984. We will not let this happen and pass the first data protection law regulating the processing of personal data as a dangerous activity, basically prohibiting it. The US has its own history with different challenges and debated such a similar law, but decided against it and said, we're gonna pass a different law whenever there is a privacy challenge. And so we have hundreds of different laws in the US. You mentioned the Italian version of my field guide. It's an international book, fifth edition in English now. And I have a separate book that is a commentary of all the US federal and California privacy laws. It's a very thick book. It's more than 700 pages now because we have hundreds of different laws in the US. And what is changing and why you're asking rightfully about convergence is California has added data processing regulation to all these hundreds of different very sector situation specific laws protecting individual privacy. We have laws that protect the privacy with supermarket club cards. We have video rental privacy protection law. We have a Fair Credit Reporting Act. We have several laws protecting health privacy, very specific very detailed laws that are intended to not overreach and re re restrict um, free enterprise and freedom of information too much, but just protect privacy as much as necessary. And on top of it, we now have processing regulation also under the California Consumer Privacy Act in California. Good. And the experience of California with the CCPA, which is probably the most detailed privacy law in the US, uh, um, can be considered uh, as a bridge between uh, US and the EU in this divergence of approach that you mentioned before? Yes, because the CCPA, even though it's called consumer privacy law, is an omnibus data processing regulation. It is extremely detailed and it regulates in many ways, adopts a number of principles from European data protection law and develops them further. California is the largest US state in terms of people and economy and would be the fourth largest economy in the world if it was a separate country and therefore often sets the tact in the United States. Interestingly, the CCPA did not come from the legislature, but by way of a popular ballot initiative in 2018, where privacy advocates 
wanted to pass a law that was different from all these sector situation specific privacy laws and they wanted to add a more omnibus comprehensive processing regulation like European models. And it's interesting that this law was actually enacted at the general election in 2020. In 2018, when this was tried the first time, last minute, the um, legislator stepped in and passed something very similar and the activist removed the ballot initiative. But then there was so much lobbying, so many changes to the law, and it became then another ballot initiative the California Privacy Rights Act of 2020. Now it is was elected by a, a sound majority of Californians, 56% that wanted to add processing regulation to privacy specific laws. And when you ask me about the first experiences, a lot of work has been done here in California. A lot of lawsuits have been filed. And the very first company that was sued and settled with the California Attorney General was actually a European headquartered multinational that was ordered to pay a fine of $1.2 million um, for not obtaining proper consent or giving opt-out rights with respect to digital advertising on a website, a technology that is very common, a lot of companies use, and we expect hundreds and thousands of more investigations. Most companies settle earlier and it is not public, but they are, we are aware that this law is very aggressively enforced in California and because it's such a large company, a uh, country, if it were separate or a state uh, being part of the United States, most companies around the world in the United States have a presence here or sell online and have to comply with the CCPA. Do you envisage a trend of convergence uh, of US uh, towards EU or uh, do you believe that the gap that you mentioned before will uh, remain uh, also in the future? Instead of putting new, new regulation on top of it, which forces companies, for example, to share information under the EU Data Act is seeking to try and create data economies in a place where the processing of data is already largely prohibited. So our sense is that this doubling down on overly restrictive regulation may not be the best way to achieve the goals. At the same time, I want to acknowledge that the US is not doing it much better with adding all these different state laws. I think what the US would need to do to counter this development and continue with its very successful model that has um, supported Silicon Valley and a lot of innovation and good technologies which are being actively used in Europe. Um, in order to keep that going, the US would need to have simplified regulation, less laws on a state level. There has to be some federal preemption and standard setting so that our own thicket of data related regulation becomes more understandable, both to the data subjects, to the consumers, to the enforcers and then to the businesses who ultimately want to do the right thing, want to comply with the law, but don't understand anymore in which direction they're being pulled. When on the one hand, they're being told to store and share as little information as possible. The selling of personal information is a bad thing. People have an opt out to it and they should keep everything to themselves. And then other legislation or enforcement comes in with competition law initiatives or EU Data Act. We have here on the federal level, the CURE Act that makes companies share information more because that is helpful for innovation. That is good for competition to share more. Um, but if they want to compete actively and advertise their products, new companies trying to reach people and they're told that they can't place cookies and they need triple opt in consent in Germany to send an email. Um, that is just confusing and our senses is being overdone. I think instead of adding new laws all the time, some of the old laws should be adjusted, modernized, repealed, replaced by more productive, understandable, simplified and policy driven new laws. Much, Professor Detterman. It was really a pleasure to hear from you and uh, to listen to your opinions. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I hope I can be back in person soon. I love Italy. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.